Gödel became obsessed with time travel. And in particular, the limits Einstein had placed on it. Initially, he spent some time testing the idea that nothing could travel faster than light. But it turned out Einstein was right. So Gödel decided to find another way to get to the past. He changed the nature of time itself. The problem, he realized, was that everyone assumed time flowed in a straight line. But what if it didn't? What if time could loop round, like eddies in water? Gödel suggested if you could make time loop round like that, then you could reach the past. You wouldn't need to travel faster than the speed of light. You'd be able to take a shortcut and magically get there before the light did. There was only one way Gödel could think of to make time loop. It was to make everything else loop too. The universe would have to spin round. In Gödel's universe, if you stood absolutely still and uh, weren't dizzy, uh, you would find that the stars and galaxies in the universe would be twirling, uh, twirling around you. And, and you would find that if you went on a long enough trip away from home, you could come back even before you started. Gödel found that in such a rotating universe, not only could an observer go off on a trajectory and reach any given point in space they liked, they could also reach any given point in time. It would be possible to leave Earth in a spaceship and travel not only anywhere, but anywhen too. Gödel's idea of looping time was astonishing and breathtaking. It was also complete nonsense. For the universe we live in does not rotate. This, however, didn't seem to matter. For his idea made sense mathematically. And so that meant it was inspirational. Gödel's solution of 1949 opened up a Pandora's box. It broke the ice, or, or perhaps the taboo. The genie was out of the bottle. Gödel was to inspire a whole new generation of physicists. And even the fact that he took to wearing a balaclava all the time wasn't to put them off. in New Orleans, the home of Mardi Gras, voodoo, and by sheer coincidence, an internationally famous pioneer of time travel. And we're not talking about Aggie. Professor Frank Tipler has become the guru of all serious scientific time travelers. The first to take Gödel's brilliant but crazy solution and turn it into something almost practical. I have always been interested in extending human power. That has been my motivation since kindergarten. I have a vivid memory of myself imagining rockets going up in the distance which I myself had designed. since I have been interested in space travel and time travel. In the early 1970s, he heard about the work of Kurt Gödel, but it set him thinking. Kurt Gödel had shown that if the universe happened to be rotating sufficiently rapidly, it could give rise to time travel. 
And I thought this was a fascinating idea. Unfortunately, we could not rotate the entire universe. It's not now rotating, it will never rotate. But I wondered to myself, would it be possible to rotate a smaller object that might yield the same property of time travel? The first smaller object Tipler studied was smaller than the entire universe, but it wasn't exactly tiny. He wondered whether he could exploit the strange, vast phenomena called black holes. They are spinning regions of the universe left by the collapse of stars. In black holes, the normal laws of physics seem to have been reversed. And it had been suggested that if you entered one, you might experience time running backwards to the past. Frank found a rather practical problem with black holes. The problem with a black hole is it's surrounded by a surface so that if you go inside the black hole, you can never get out again. So if a black hole couldn't be a time machine, Tipler thought perhaps he could do the next best thing. He could make a black hole all of his own. He used mathematical equations to try and devise different rotating structures which would create the properties of a black hole without the disadvantages. There seemed to be just one structure which did the trick. Now, it occurred to me that another rotating body which would not have the surface of a black hole is a long extended cylinder. I was able to prove that inevitably if you were to spin up a cylinder sufficiently rapidly it would necessarily have a region around it that would permit time travel, permit you to go around the cylinder and return to your starting point far away from the cylinder before you left. True time travel. It had taken Tipler two years to work out the mathematical implications of this bizarre structure. Finally, he was able to announce it really would work. If you travelled round the cylinder, you could go back in time. The universe wouldn't be rotating as Gödel suggested, but the effect would be the same. I was so excited because I thought that this had at long last shown that time travel would be in some point in the future within human grasp. Frank Tipler had proved that a time machine might one day be built. The dream of moving around time at will, it seemed, could be achieved. Humans would be able to go to the future or the past and return to the present day. And now others set out to build variations on Tipler's theme. We now have a zoology of time machines. All these solutions that have been proposed for time machines do the same thing that Gödel did back in 1949. And that is warp and twist the 